My name is Dylan O'Donnell. I have spent five or six years and I'm getting pretty good at taking pretty pictures of space from my backyard. I'm not a scientist, but I sort of like to do sciencey things and really I'm just insecure about my intelligence level, which is why I went and did two degrees in IT and one degree in astronomy. And I try and do sciencey things on this channel. And one of those things I do is asteroid identification, detection, tracking and reporting. But nothing is less impressive in this hobby than watching a small point source of light move from one pixel to another pixel. It's the least photogenic thing I do. But if I'm at a party and somebody asks me, what do you do? I'm happy to say, me? I'm just trying to save the goddamn world. So turn down the volume before I expose your auditory sensory issues with the intro. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. This video is sponsored by High Point Scientific, who just keep inspiring me to make these videos, but more on them later. Remember when we didn't know what a tsunami looked like because it hadn't happened to anyone with a digital camera? And then it happened in 2004. And what was really interesting about that is people saw the ocean retreat and they walked out onto the beach, which was freshly exposed, without really realizing that there was a huge wave of death coming towards them. And remember how we forgot about global pandemics and how to deal with them or that they even really are going to affect us. And we couldn't even really coordinate stopping moving for two weeks, which would have been enough to make the virus extinct. But we're just not cooperative enough to actually pull that off. I do not have to wear a face mask. Well, that's what asteroids are like now. Asteroids these days are called solar system bodies, according to the IAU, who also diagnosed Pluto with dwarfism, but I will refer to them as asteroids in this video. It's easier, we all understand it intuitively, and I grew up in the 80s. We've identified about half a million of these space rocks flying through space at any given time, and we know this is just a small percentage of them out there. We see small ones crashing into Earth every day. We know big ones hit the Earth. We know this is going to happen. Given my faith in humanity at this point, I fully expect that an asteroid will be detected and will be coming and will completely fail as a society to even avoid the destruction. We will have an inquiry later on and figure out why it was so hard to detect in the first place and why it was so hard to get people out of the city. I do not have to wear a face mask. You really think we can deal with this? Our leaders can barely tie their shoelaces. Anyway, there are ongoing efforts to identify and characterize these asteroids, detect near-Earth objects, and they've been slowly defunded and compromised over the years by other human activities. <coughs> Starling. And despite the best efforts of 1990 action movie dramas, uh, we just don't seem to have any interest anymore. There was a spike after those movies, and the funding went up and the observations went up, but we've been slowly defunding it ever since. It's harder though for us backyard astrophotographers to ignore it because we see it. We see it almost in every image we take. We see space rocks zipping through our images. If you are an astrophotographer watching this channel because of the tutorials I do, go back through your data. Go back through a few months and blink your images and really take the time to look. You will find an asteroid. What I'm going to show you in this video is how to identify that asteroid. At this point, it's just a UFO flying through space, but we have the tools to identify this. We're going to be using the most popular asteroid detection software, Astrometrica, which costs 25 euros. There are about a thousand observatories registered. These range from backyard astronomers to professional or semi-professional observatories. They're registered for doing this minor planet detection, and most of them are using Astrometrica, which is cheap, and it looks like it was written for Windows 3.1. It was actually written for DOS, and it doesn't look like it's matured that much ever since. However, it does the job, and they have maintained the updates to make sure it continues to do the job, and it even integrates with the new Gaia Data Release 2 dataset. Did I mention the fate of the human race is left to a ragtag bunch of backyard astronomers and a $25 piece of shareware? And we're going to open Astrometrica. 
when you open it up it'll ask you if you want to overwrite these files because they, these are the report files that go to the minor planet center once you've made your observations uh, so i'm just going to say yes we're going to generate some new ones now the trick with astrometrica is you want it to be configured well first if it's configured well you'll automatically be able to solve your images and reduce them and uh, identify those asteroids really quickly which is great before you get a registered code, an MPC code, and become a registered observatory, you have to submit a number of observations first. They've got to be good as well, quality. I haven't managed to get that quality because I suck. Uh, also, I do realize that I am doxing myself here, uh, which is why I've covered up this section. This is your longitude and latitude, which is imperative for the observations we're doing because where asteroids appear in the sky really do change depending on where we are on Earth. Reduction of the image is about a moment in time and where you are on the earth looking out into space uh, so make sure you have accurate longitude latitude and elevation details in here these are your contact details which will be in the report in the ccd section you want to have your focal length and the angle that the photos are taken with you want to have your camera's details in here and don't worry about the fact it says ccd this seems to be working with the images from my cmos camera as well time in the file header is important to get right you want to have your offset from the UTC time set in here and if you're using Cygnus Generator Pro like me then the time in the FITS header is the end of the exposure. The filter I'm using is Gaia Broadband because just because I'm not using any filters. This example I'm actually using a color camera you normally wouldn't you'd use a mono camera with some sort of filter or broadband. Now I've found that adjusting things in here really made a difference. If Astrometric is having trouble matching automatically you can increase the number of stars but also increase the radius because cameras these days have a high resolution so I suspect the default settings in here can be a bit strict so I've just opened these up just a little bit and that made all the difference also change your upper and lower magnitude limits so that it's detecting the stars that you have based on the range that your telescope is capable of detecting and change your star catalog to Gaia there are a number of different catalogs in here I think it defaults to UCAC3 but the Gaia data release 2 is the one to use. Everything else is pretty straightforward. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is load the images and these are ones I've prepared earlier so I know they're going to work. These are uncalibrated though, so these are straight off the camera which is also good. They're about 50 minutes apart so you can clearly see the movement of the asteroid from one frame to another and it's asking me for the time of exposure. So it should be calculating automatically what that middle of the exposure is. If your acquisition software is good, it's already got all of this information inside the FITS header. You don't have to tell it. It's just gonna know from the metadata. So in this case, I can just click OK and click OK again for the second image. And the first thing we can do if we want is we can click the images. Okay, and we can see our asteroid candidate here going from one pixel to the other. I'm going to close this now and I'm going to go to astrometry and data reduction. It has the RA and DEC in the file itself. I don't need to do any lookup. If you hadn't solved the image, you could look it up based on asteroids that you know are nearby or whatever. Okay. Okay, it's found a bunch of stars which it's matched and uh, a lot of blue stars as well, which are the reference stars. Now at this point we could do two things. We could say known object overlay and that takes the data that it has, its matched point in space, and matches it with a point in time. So it knows what we should see in this and if we look here we can see a number of different asteroids flying around. The asteroid I suspect I actually have is this one uh, and I know that because it has a magnitude of 17.8 there's our asteroid there going across from left to right diagonally and that's the exact motion that's happening in this one here i would suspect it's maybe my location that's somehow wrong because this should be over here but i am fairly confident it is this asteroid here so i'm going to stop this blink close this and i'll just tile these windows so we can see them and it's actually a bit difficult to work out where it is when you can't see it animated, but I know it's this one just at the top of the crosshairs here, and this one at the top of the crosshairs here. So what I'm gonna do is click on that one, and it's got the centroid pretty well. I'm gonna click on these three dots here for object designation, and it will give me its best guess as to what it could be. Um, now it's, it's guessed this other 18.4, and that's tempting, but I don't think it's that one. 
I think it's actually this one here which has a much brighter magnitude. I think this one would be on the edge of detection for me and this is the one that was going in the right direction. So I'm going to select that one, accept and do the same on this one here. And that centroid's a bit off so I'm going to just give it some help here, get it more in the middle. That's better. And do the same thing here. And what we end up is with a nice text file, which we can then email through to the Harvard email address for the Minor Planet Center, which will automatically be passed by computer. They'll collect the catalog number, the position details, the time details, and the magnitude details that were detected in your images. So you are actually contributing to the science and you've identified an otherwise unidentified flying object. Once you've identified an asteroid, it's great to Google and find out when it was discovered, find out more about the character of that asteroid. And there are other things you can do. You can do photometry, you can report on magnitude. You can even take light curve data and extrapolate this into 3D images of the asteroid and what they should look like based on how the light changes as it rotates. It's a fascinating area of astronomy and backyard astronomy and one you can do without a lot of expensive equipment. You don't need the fancy color cameras, you don't even need filters. You can do this with a black and white digital camera, decent telescope and mount, and that's about it. Thanks to High Point Scientific for sponsoring this video. If you want to save the world, you can use gear from High Point Scientific and they price match that gear if you find it cheaper somewhere else. So there's really no reason you shouldn't be using them. Tell them I sent you though, I don't get any kickbacks, but I'm petty enough to want them to know how cool I am. Anyway, my name is Dylan O'Donnell. You've been watching Star Stuff. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.